Continuing our series on the differences between a driven terminal and driven modal solution in HFSS, we're going to be looking at a warning message that I received when simulating this differential microstrip. So you'll first note that I'm exciting this with a rectangular wave port. And if we look at our setup, you'll see that I'm actually using the newer broadband adaptive meshing process in which I'm meshing this over a range of 0 to 30 gigahertz, which in reality will refine our mesh very close to 0 gigahertz at probably exactly 30 gigahertz and likely one or more points in between around 15 gigahertz or so. So if I take a look at the profile and scroll up, you'll see that as I was meshing, I received this warning that both of my ports support an additional propagating and or slowly decaying mode. So the question is, why am I getting this warning? Now we could better investigate this by taking a look at a driven modal solution of the same exact geometry. So this is already solved, and if we pull up our results, we could plot the propagation constant and get a little more insight as to what exactly might be arising. So we see here that we have two dominant modes, which are TEM modes, our even and odd mode of our differential pair, and a third mode that arises around 14 gigahertz. And the question is, where exactly is that coming from? And now to get a clue, what we can do is take a look at some field, field line plots at our ports. So we'll see that mode one and mode two look pretty much like our TEM modes that we expect whereas mode 3 actually looks like a TE10 waveguide mode that we saw earlier when we were looking at hollow rectangular waveguides. Now bear in mind that to achieve this wave port excitation, we're treating the edges like a perfect electrical conducting boundary, and this is thus treated as a semi-infinite waveguide that's launching into this cross section, in this case our differential pair. So the answer to our little mystery here is that the wave port itself is actually generating that higher order mode. Now this might have been a little more obvious if you had seen the dimensions of this particular microstrip, and I've obscured it intentionally. And if we take a measurement of an edge, you'll see in this case most notably that the wave port extent is 10.16 millimeters long. So this microstrip is a little bit wider than normal. So we see that the wave port itself can actually excite these higher order modes. So it really lets us think of this particular port as a waveguide itself that, can, that is capable of generating the same modes that a hollow rectangular waveguide could support. So this gives us some insight into exactly how we might size our wave ports. So we know from our port field display that we can't let the edges of this wave port get too close to these terminals because field lines will be allowed to couple to them. They're perfect electrical conductor, conducting boundaries after all. And now we know that we can't actually make them too wide or too tall because we might unintentionally excite a higher order waveguide mode that's purely artificial to this project. So just to conclude, we'll take a look at a piece of coax. And now here, the wave port is pretty much constrained to the cross section of the coax itself. So there really are no sizing conditions here. But if I look at the propagation constant, you'll see that aside from the dominant TEM mode of our coax, We've, we now see the cutoff frequency of these higher order modes, and we could do the same thing and plot the field lines for, say, the dominant TEM mode and these higher order modes, and we're seeing a very similar effect, that the cross section of the coax itself supports higher order modes. So in this case, our port drawing is, is just fine, and the coax itself, the design itself, supports higher order modes, and that might be highly relevant to us. These designs really illuminate the importance of taking a look at higher order modes and geometries that are meant to support simple TEM modes of propagation. You'll never know when those higher order modes arise, 
and it's always worth looking into to see exactly whether or not they do arise.